visitors. Let's talk about Rochester. They need to push transition. They've done it all year. They will make things happen if they move the ball. They have to win the loose ball war. Buffalo has been losing it all year, and they don't want to give them any edge. They have to stay out of the penalty box. The emotional edge could go to Buffalo if they give them easy penalty shot goals. Then, for the Buffalo Bandits, they have to put a lid on the lefties. The big lefties for Rochester will kill you. That's Dowling on the left, and uh, Dwayne Jacobs on the left, and of course, number 99, Wolfong. Wolfong, thank you very much on the left. Three guys that'll kill you, three of their top five scores. They have to stop follow-up shots, and then they have to outshoot the other team because of their numbers. All right, we're gonna come back and get this one underway. We've got the starting goalies when we return to Buffalo.
Hawks with a 10-9 lead at the half over the Buffalo Bandits at Marine Midland Arena in Buffalo. Time now for our Naya break interview. Lee Felsmo with John Tavares. Our Naya break is one of the true superstars. John Tavares of the Buffalo Bandits. John coming into this game off an injury. When we see this interview, it'll be halftime. You have already gone through a half. What are your anticipations? What are your expectations? Your goals coming off that injury in this first half? Well, basically, I, I mean, I want to provide some leadership for the team. But uh, with, with regards to the injury, I want to go out and just kind of get comfortable out there. I'm, I'm not going to go out there and try to score two, three goals. I, if the opportunity is there, great. But I'm not going to try to push it too much. I got to get back to uh, my comfort zone out there. And that's basically what I'm going to be looking to do. A comfort zone is something this team has not had this year. You've been here since 92. It's never been such a stretch of frustrating games. Yeah, well, right now, I mean, we, we basically got our backs against the wall this weekend with this game tonight and the game tomorrow in Ontario. Um, I don't know. Things aren't going our way right now, and uh, we got to find a way to turn things around. Let's talk about John Tavares when he's not playing lacrosse. Uh, tell us a little bit about you and your personal life. Well, basically, the lacrosse is my life. I, uh, well, besides my full-time job as a teacher at Philip Pocock High School, Mississauga, uh, my wife also plays lacrosse. We just got married in September. Um, we also own a lacrosse company called Pro Boss Lacrosse. Uh, we deal with apparels and uniforms and equipment, so it keeps me quite busy. And uh, going to the gym when I can, and that's basically in my life in a nutshell. It doesn't sound like much, wow, when I think about it. No, it sounds like a lot because you are a true superstar in this uh, you know, niche game of lacrosse. You are a true superstar. Let's talk about the national team because coming off the National Lacrosse League, you'll be looking forward to the summer where once every four years the field lacrosse gang gets together. You'll be representing Canada when they play for the World Championship. Yeah, this will be my second uh, attempt at the uh, the World Cup. Um, I have, my background is really box across. I haven't played much field across, so it takes a little bit getting used to. And unfortunately, um, the national team here in Canada, I mean, we don't get together enough. I mean, I think we, we're going to get together maybe two weekends before the World Cup, and that's quite pathetic when you think about what's at stake and the competition that's there. And the U.S. team, the Australian team, and, and all the other, England and, and Japan, I mean, they're quickly approaching. And it's, we're going to have a work cut out for us. All right, John, let's refocus for one last question on this game tonight. This is not a team, the Buffalo Bandits, that has one thing to fix. This team really has had troubles in a lot of different areas. What do you hope to bring back to this team? What do the Bandits have to do to get back on track? Well, I think the key word you said as, as you were talking, and was team. We got to play as a team again. And right now we're playing as individuals. Uh, we have a lot of people saying, "What's wrong with us?" Uh, team, uh, players that is, but it doesn't seem like anybody's stepping up. Uh, we just quit the talk and just go out there and play as a team instead of getting on each other's back. All right, we'll have to watch now as the second half comes up. John Tavares, a great player, and really what impresses me about John Tavares is he works harder off the ball than anybody does with the ball, and that is what makes him exceptional in the game of lacrosse. Thank you very much, Leaf. Score at the half. Rochester Nighthawks leading the Buffalo Bandits 10-9 as Chris Driscoll has returned with a hat trick himself. Much more to come your way from Marine Midland Arena in Buffalo. It's National Lacrosse League action. It's the National Lacrosse League's Bud Light Halftime Report at Marine Midland Arena in Buffalo where the Rochester Nighthawks lead the Buffalo Bandits 10-9. Pete Weber with Leif Elsmo upstairs in the broadcast booth. Brian Blessing downstairs in the bench area. Let's go to the highlights and as we join the action, it's 3-2 Rochester and they're about to make it a two-goal difference, Leif. Well, it was two straight goals at this point. One by Sudan, one by T to make it that score. And then the fourth goal comes from Chris Driscoll. A nice fast break by Rochester. Here goes Driscoll, checks the defense, watch the accuracy. Just goes over the shoulder of Ross Cowie with a little bit of heat. That makes it four to two. Then, the very next goal comes from Tavares. Watch him catch this ball in traffic. Come over with the left hand after one fake sets Dietrich. Great location from a guy who hasn't played very much in the last four weeks. That made the score at that point four to four. Then it was Dan Teat again on a fast break. This team has been doing it from the right-handed side. They'll move the ball from the left to the right. It goes over here. Cowie is positioned to the left pipe. Now he has to go to the far side. Teat finishes. Great job, and they've been doing that from the right-handed side all game. That made it 5-4. But the Kilgore brothers have been a big factor. This is the power play and a big shot by Darris Kilgore, the big right hand from Tavares up top. 
That made it 5-5, and that game has been back and forth pretty much like that in the whole first half. Loose ball, as you can see, Buffalo doing a great job. They had to do that, and they have the advantage by seven. That is critical if they are going to win this game. Saves, look at Cowie. Five more than Dietrich. Faceoffs won Rochester. We expected them to lead there. And the extra man plays, the power plays. Two for Rochester, one for Buffalo. No big factor at this point in the game. All right, thank you very much, Leaf. Our Bud Light Halftime Report will be back with second half action from Marine Midland Arena in just a few moments. It's 10-9 Rochester. Hey, Bud Light, can uh, I have one? Not that one. <laughs> That's the first one. I love the first one. Okay, then I'll have this one. Not that one. That's the center. Everything revolves around the center. Okay, I'll have this. No, not that one, man. That's the rear. It's the last one. The last For the great one. taste that won't fill you no. up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. There's no here. Uh-uh. Mine. Uh the new Baltimore Thunder professional lacrosse team is taking the league by storm. They've got Gary Gate, the Michael Jordan of lacrosse, the best player in the history of the game. Thunder games are affordable family fun, a great place for a great time. Non-stop action, more goals, more speed, more skill and finesse. The Baltimore Thunder, taking the league by storm. For tickets, call 410-481-C. You'll be thunderstruck. CNBC's Business Center is about power. Who's got it and how they did it. Business Center is about money. People making money and what they're doing with their money. Business Center is about people who work hard and play hard. And sometimes fall hard. Business Center with Maria Bartiromo and Tyler Matheson. Weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern, only at CNBC. Behind every deal is a great story. We have harvested the ultimate weapon. From the fires of hell, he emerges. I got me! A new breed of superhero. Awesome hardware. Witness his amazing powers today on Prime Cinema. Who are you? From comic book adventure to at-home action. Unleash the excitement of Spawn on Prime Cinema. Order in action effects and a whole lot more. Rochester in front by a goal on the road, playing at Buffalo. And the Buffalo Bandits tonight beginning a string of three games in eight nights. They'll be playing tomorrow night as well. They'll be in Hamilton, Ontario at Cops Coliseum to take on the Ontario Raiders. And the uh, Ontario Raiders Brain Trust is here scouting this game tonight. And that includes their ex-coach, uh, Les Bartley, who took this team to several championships in the major indoor lacrosse league. So that'll be a real regional rivalry when Les Wakeling, the new coach, takes on Les Bartley, the old coach. And Buffalo definitely needs to pull something together this weekend, or they might as well write this season off. Crowd showing up in uh, good numbers here to watch the return of John Tavares. And we're waiting for the player. I don't think the teams knew that it was a 12-minute uh, halftime, which is what we do for TV. <laughs> and Pete, they're killing us here. Yes, hey, but they you, are. But you folks at, uh, at Home Team Sports, where we're live as well, we get to see Rochester next week, the 28th, run over to the Baltimore Arena. You'll see a battle for first place as the Nighthawks come down there to take on the Baltimore Thunder at Gary Gate. Yeah, the remaining games for Rochester include Omen home series with both Baltimore and Philadelphia, plus a game with the New York Saints. Let's go downstairs now. Brian Blessing is ready with Rochester coach Paul Day. Okay, Pete, thank you very much. Paul, how about this first half? Uh, last time out, you really handled Buffalo quite well in your home court. Uh, really, they're giving you a good game tonight. All you can handle. Sure, I mean, I think we're uh, we're not controlling the ball very well, and uh, we're turning the ball over the midfield, and uh, in their end, we're rushing a little bit. We keep the ball out of Darius Rich, John Tavares' hands. We control the ball. It keeps them off the floor. It keeps the D guys on. You've had a chance to talk to your team now through this first half. What adjustments have you seen that Buffalo has made since that last matchup? Well, I think... Uh, Obviously, I think uh, they're moving the ball a lot better. It's not a one-man show as it was before. Cowley's playing a good game. You know, we're out shooting them 29 to uh, 23 right now. I thought he's holding them in pretty good. And certainly, Tavares, a guy you got to keep your eye on. Now, obviously, he makes everybody else dangerous out there. It's not just him. Okay, Paul, best of luck in the second half. All right, we're just about set to get it set uh, for the
before the second half, and we send it back upstairs to Pete Weber and leave the Altmo. Pete. Thank you, Brian. Well, I'll tell you, there's no question about how much more John Tavares has drawn out of his teammates here tonight. And what makes it tough to cover about John Tavares is he's not a guy that carries the ball. He kills you off the ball. So defensively, when he's on the field, the defense is watching him, but he doesn't have the ball. So the ball carrier gets a lot more opportunity to get a good shot, and then when you least suspect it, Tavares kills you. A lot more room as we are underway with second half action. Chris Driscoll plummeting there to the floor as the band is trying to come back on the attack with the ball taken away from Mike Hazen. Hazen with some great pressure there in Buffalo, just as we've talked about, Pete, stepping it up a lot more on both ends of the field. Chris Driscoll, a hat trick already coming back tonight. Looking to the left side, threw it high over the goal. Over onto the board. Daniel Tito has a hat trick himself trying to pick it up. Plays it back for Randy Mears. Mears coming in right side. The shot he scores. Well, that was a smart play by a real smart player, Mearns. You'll see Mearns in this play. He's looking to make the feed, but the defense knows that, so that opens up a huge cavity. He notices the huge cavity. He just runs right up the field and shoots. It took Mearns a minute. Look, he looks for a feed, then he sees nobody's in front of him. So he runs in until he's picked up and just buries the shot. Great change of options for Randy Mearns. His fifth goal of the year. Nighthawks up a couple now. Coming right back. A little bit wide of Wilfong. Picked up there by Darius Kilgore, and now out by the goaltender, Ross Kallis. This is Jason Wolf, who scored a beautiful first half goal on a back end. And Mearns is keeping the script of Rochester intact. They have seven different players scoring in this game. They spread the load. That shot from out front going down to stop it. Tom Fair taking the shot. Steve Dietrich coming up with the stop. Dietrich has played every minute of the season this year. He is unbelievable. What a wall for Rochester. One of five Ironmen who served this franchise and has been with him ever since. Coming down the attack, and that just grazed off the arm of Ross Cowley. Nighthawks take it off the wall. Moloski throw it in front, and that deflected off the cross of Ted Dowling. If we get a Fennell, gets it out in front for Cowley. Now in turn for Tom Fair. Dowling has just not been comfortable on that left-hand side. He's not gotten the ball where he needs to get it to finish. And when he has had the chance, he's muffed it. So Dowling looking to be an impact player here in the second half. If you have impact, we have it right there on the side of the crease. Dietrich looking to scoop the ball up. A dive for it. Then it's picked off and started back up field by Miloski. Yes, to Dan with a shot. That one going wide. And taken off the end board by Hayson. Feeds it up for Tavares. A little too far for him. Tavares now turning inside off the wall. Fakes the shot. Takes the shot. And Dietrich goes down and stops it. Tavares does what great players do in that he really can judge when he needs to take pace off a shot. So that time, he took some of the pace off because Dietrich was already coming to his knees, trying to change the pace of the shot to the backside, but Dietrich got his knee on it. Daniel Teed outside for the Nighthawks. Nighthawks up a couple. Just about three minutes gone in the second half. All pursued by Chris Driscoll. A little swipe at it, went up in the bench area. It will be... Back, ball now. Backcourt violation, you cannot bring it back into your defensive zone. Good look at Driscoll on the sideline. Hat trick already. Taking care of that in the first half. There is Gilmore. Outside with it here. To the rookie, Chris Clark, and then the shot from the side. Buffalo comes back to going to double digits. It's 11 10. Uh, Chaconi's a great player, and that's who made that finishing shot work. Darius Kibble was on the wrong side, but they got it over to Tommy Fair. Fair just dishes it against Chaconi, and he just pushes it in past Dietrich. Beautiful job of Fair to see Chaconi, and then Chaconi just pulls out a beautiful feed. The feed was right where it had to be to make that shot work. Chaconi with his sixth goal of the season. An 11-10 Rochester lead. Buffalo ball. And everything will be started up by Travis Kilgore. John Tavares. Looking 
for some room. Comes behind Kilgore. Back that. He's back off the wall to the center. That shot. Bounced in front. Dietrich with the stop. Trying to pick up the rebound. And doing so. Head back out for Tavares. Tavares trying to feed off to the side for Dallas Squire. Smart Ball play. Ball. Yes. Pete, that was a great play. And Squire not ready for it. Pass tipped away. Travis Kilgore. Back for Tavares. And a whistle. Stopping play to the far side of the field. Now Kevin Dance working on the Buffalo player. We're trying to separate those two guys right now before it gets any worse. They might both go to the box. That looks like the case with 4.06 gone in the third quarter. It's Jason Luke, I believe. Let's go downstairs to Brian Blessing and John Tavares. John, how's the knee feeling? Feels great. Got to be thrilled to get back in here. It's nice to just try to get back in the game shape. <laughs> yeah, he's right back out there, Pete. That takes care of that interview, huh? But they want to keep him on the offensive end. And, of course, it's their ball, so he comes right back out. And the feet across, broken up in front. Coming away with it, Tim Sudan. Holding up down the right side. Cowan, for Molossi. Checked away from him. Taken away, fed out front. And then that feed deflecting away on the good check in front by Mike Cason for Buffalo. Again, Dallin, yeah, Dallin can't get a shot beat. Just had a great shot. Trying to get it to Dallin. Let's go, Molossi. Just the get for Tim Sudan. Let's go, Sudan. Go, Molossi couldn't pick up the point. Cowley's arguing about the crease violation, but nice job by Cowley to go pipe to pipe. He really sensed that they were going to go across the crease with that feed. Over and back on the Buffalo Bandits. 4.51 gone in the third quarter. 11-10 Rochester in front. Got to take your hats off to the defense. We talked to the keys about really putting the lid on the lefties. And Buffalo has put a lot of attention on the left side. Has not let the left side dominate the game for Rochester. Trying to get some room right side. This moving around right here. Lead off to the right. Now trying to get out for Driscoll. He has it. In shot. Deflected off the left arm of Cowie. Keeping it alive. Daniel T. And then the ball trickles away. And Ross Cowie picks it up for Buffalo. Starting it down the floor for Chris Clark, the rookie. Clark moving in front. His shot. Turned away. Dietrich. Rebound. Sent back back inside. That was taken there by Dallas Squire. As they fight for possession of the ball, the Nighthawks come up with it. Outlet for Chris Driscoll. Driscoll imploring his teammate to join him on the attack quickly. That shot stopped. Nice cover the angle by Cowie. Taken by Wilfong. I'll tell you right now, Ross Cowie is playing as well as he can play. He is playing a sensational game. He's giving him everything they need in the nets. And Buffalo has obviously a great chance to win this game and put themselves back in the playoff hunt. Jason Luke turning inside. Lost his helmet. Infraction coming up. Cowie going to the bench for Buffalo to get the extra attacker. And now the penalty will be assessed. And the loose ball coming off. There'll be some talk about that. As the bandit player popped off the bench to take it. Well, they're saying, why was the whistle blown? Possession was not lost. Speed, tremendous quickness. Luke just rapes that defensive player by just going inside of him and then loses his helmet. Gets the call. The ball rolled out, Pete, and it went to the midfield line, but it didn't cross the midfield line. And Tavares was making the switch, came in and picked it up. And then they blew the whistle for some reason. Don't, I don't think there was good calls to blow that whistle. They still had a free shot coming up. So now. Buffalo with the second power play of the night. Looking back out for Tavares. Gives it off. Travis Gilmore with the score. Buffalo goes 2 of 2 on the power play and ties the game at 11. This is a power play that was one of the weakest in the league. Now Tavares back makes him lethal. They've got the great lefty righty combination. Then Darius gives it over to his brother, Travis who takes the lefty and just buries it. Up to Johnny Tavares, to Darius. Look at Tavares, uh, big Travis coming in and getting himself in great position to finish that shot. 
His second goal of the night. Travis Kilgore with his eighth. An 11-11 game from Buffalo. A real battle here. Travis Kilgore. This is the same Milwaukee coming away with a loose ball. It went all the way back to Dietrich. Now for Tim Sudan. Sudan in on the attack. Tries to feed in from Milwaukee. Turned away by Cowley. And a whistle stop in play. Driscoll could not believe he missed that shot because good defense by Ryan Sanderson. Sanderson had him all tied up. Borderline holding call, but that's what you've got to do when you get the ball in the crease. Credit Sanderson with that defense. Buffalo ball. Get the clock going once again. 11-11 the score. Worth the pick. Trying to get Darius Kilgore free. Powering his way in went over the shoulder there. Hasten at his feet. Picks it up. Outside right. Fed it off to the side of the goal. That shot. That stopped there by Dietrich. Ball picked up. Trying to feed it back out in front. Jason Roop losing control, but it's picked away. Taken now by Kilgore. His shot. Dietrich blocks that into the corner. The shot taken by Rich Kilgore to Vox. Outside of that tumble right in front of the Rochester bench. As Rich Kilgore gave a little extra shot to Kevin Dance. Ball goes over to Rochester with a nice play by watching the boards here. Kevin Dance 13 goes down. He pulls the stick down. I'll tell you what, what you don't see there is when Dance goes down, he pulls the six. See the stick? Dance is smart enough that he's ripping the player down, Kilgore, by holding his stick. Driscoll, beautiful feed, and the shot off the post by Mears. That was a gimme goal. It was a great move. He just hits the pipe. Whoa, what a move by Randy Mearns. He had Cowie out of position and brought it. Cracks it off the iron. Three on the block and missed the pass to Dallas Squire. Breaking Jason Lewis does the play down the right side. Nighthawks ball along the scramble against the inboard. The intensity seems to be picking up. And a couple lost opportunities to beat each team with a chance there to get a great shot on net. You don't get that many one goal games, you gotta cap them off. Might be away. Outside, it's Driscoll. Driscoll. Penalty by Driscoll. Driscoll gets a free shot. Call. He's gonna get cracked in the head, Pete. It'll be a penalty against the defender on Driscoll. He's getting the extra shots now. And now it will be assessed. Yes, Driscoll got mugged to be certain. Boy, once they got the, the violation of the they just went all after him. Penalty was already assessed. Now look at this. Penalty's already assessed. Watch him go after Driscoll. Well, after this, they just kind of kept racking him. Were they going to get the penalty? I guess they made sure they earned it, right? I think they talked about Driscoll the halftime. Oh. He's back from injury, gets a hat trick in the first half, and I guarantee you they spent a few minutes in halftime saying Driscoll is not going to beat us. Nighthawks an amazing study of a team with so much balanced scoring. It's a very tough to defend. Power play opportunity to play strong in these power plays. They have scored twice already with the advantage. Here's their fourth opportunity. Trying to give the pass off to his very bottom. Buffalo Bandits come up with it. Then turn back aside to Driscoll. Driscoll scoops it off on Milosky. Jacobs is open. And Jacobs got the crossbar. So he was far out. He's down. He got the crossbar. They had it for the pass. Short-handed. Gives it off. And the shot they score. Steve Fennell. Short-handed. Buffalo in front. 12-11. Jason Luke is getting his helmet ripped off every time he comes down there. He's got tremendous speed, and Rochester is taking him to the mat every time he gets the fast break. But Rochester missed another great opportunity to score on their offensive end. Opportunities are going to kill him. They missed two, and now they give it back to Buffalo. Jason Luke had his helmet ripped off moments ago. Watch this play as they go around his head. They're not going to let him take the shot. His helmet comes off. Meanwhile, he gives it up ahead. And it's Steve Fennell, who's normally a defensive player all the way. He was on the defensive end who came down the fast break and just finishes beautifully. 
to give the Bandits a one-goal lead. His second goal of the year. And again, this is Jason Luke who is getting some help from the Bandits training staff. Todd Champion out there to help him bounce back. Three straight goals, Pete, have given Buffalo the lead when Rochester had it. Watch this loop on the right of your screen just getting ripped down. The helmet comes off. Tough kid, but I gotta tell you, he must not have much of a chin strap because that helmet's coming off pretty easy. Not too easy, but he's, he's a tough, fast, great skill. He's gonna take some good shots tonight. Stamp that thing on there, Jason. <laughs> so Fidel at 9.06. An even strength goal by Dean Ciccone at 3-11. A power play score by Travis Kilgore at 6-16. And a shorthanded goal by Fennell at 9-06. Fennell just doubled his offensive output of the year. Brian Blessing downstairs. All right, Pete, Jason Luke here. Great speed. And Jason, it's been a rough night for you. Yeah, it's just uh, an important game for us. It's going to tend to get rough, but it's important. All right, he makes the big play. He took a beating, but it was well worth it. He took one for the team to put a goal on the board. Nothing like a little denial of water to get you back in the game. He's all refreshed now. Buffalo up 12 and 11. Still short hand with Jacone. On the right outside. Tavares with the shot. That deflected on the goaltender, Dietrich, into the corner. That was smart. Very, very smart by Tavares. He saw Dietrich looking around as they had numbers on defense. And of course, the shot clock was counting down. He just took a hard shot, almost made it big. 40 seconds to go on the man advantage for the Nighthawks, who have given up a short handed goal. Hollenbeck hands it off and goes back to the bench. The left side's still not clicking. I think it's been Dewey Jenkins with some open shots the far side, 34. They just can't get it to a stick. By Bristol, take it away. Bandits trying to break out short handed, can't hold on. Corey Bomber. They'll push it now. Bomberry gets the return, does not shoot. Comes out instead for Driscoll, and why not? His shot deflected into the screen off the shoulder of Cowie. Four seconds to go on the Nighthawk power play, and they have given up a goal. Better hurry and get one off here because they've had opportunities that they have not had. That's going, that could cost them the game in a close one, obviously. Now, Buffalo back full strength and Cowie makes the stop. So the Bandits survive that series. And Buffalo picks it up to Barnes. And now it's Corey Bomberry in the middle of the field. Where has Corey Bomberry been? He can bring 11 goals into this game. The leading scorer on the team. He's been shut out here tonight. That could be a difference. That could give Buffalo a win. situated in the penalty boxes. Johnny Tavares, fresh off. Only about four weeks of what they thought was a six-week injury. So he's coming back. It was a desperation play. This is the weekend they had to win some games. And their superstar said, I'm ready to go. I saw him in Baltimore last week, and he was warming up before the game. He had his uniform on. He said, you know, if I'm ready to go, I just need clearance from the doctors. Not 100%, but he felt he could play. He needed clearance from the doctors. Got it this week. Officially getting it this morning. 
Ryan Blessing downstairs, what do you have? All right, Pete, we got Jeff Wolf on here. Jeff, you had a big game against Buffalo last time out. You knew in their own rink they were going to come at you hard tonight. Yeah, we knew that there was going to be a different team show up to, uh, tonight. They're playing in front of their own crowd. They're a much better team than what they showed in Rochester. I mean, it's, they're certainly very talented. Just right now, we've got to remember to keep our composure and just keep it going one step at a time. All right, Jeff, thanks a lot. Back upstairs. All right, Bomberry. Good at midfield. Now the ball picked up by Dance. But off the side, tipped up into the air. Jacoby can't get to it. Jason Luke going after this well. A struggle for possession. As the bodies go flying against the wall. And the whistles don't get play. The fans are ready. And so too are the players. This Buffalo Bandit team is sniffing blood. They have not won in a while, and they haven't felt comfortable all year. They sense that it's coming back together, and they are getting more intense every minute. Rochester comes back defensively. Buffalo up 12-11. Bandits have scored the last three. Tavares put a threat in the traffic. And Dietrich turned around and made the stop. Battle for the ball once again in the box. As bodies go to the artificial turf. And the men in stripe shirts have their hands full. This team is playing so much better than they have. We've said it many times, but it just has to be repeated. Buffalo, most of the season, would take a shot and immediately go down to the defense. Now they are fighting for possessions. In Baltimore last week, the ground ball difference for loose balls was 90-some for Baltimore and 50-some for the Buffalo Bandits. There's your difference in a five-goal game, 2015, taken by Baltimore. So obviously, when they got their chances to get a piece of shot, they were canning it against Baltimore. They just did not give their, their team a chance to win. They didn't give Cali a chance to get comfortable like he is tonight by playing some aggressive defense. Here's the penalty. More company in the penalty boxes. In the batting, number 94, Ryan Sanderson. And a Rochester number 11, Richie Thorpe. Coincidentals again. Thorpe for Rochester, Sanderson for Buffalo. Trying to keep things cool here. Tavares looking deflected away. Spun around in front and hammered down into the crease. And the crease violates it otherwise. Jason Luke, and he's going to feel this one tomorrow night. Going to be Buffalo Ball. He's a player uh, I mentioned a couple times tonight. I, I just don't understand why he doesn't get more attention or more plays drafted for him. He's got such tremendous skills. Tonight he's a little more involved in the offense. And that's got to start from uh, Coach Wakeman. They've got to get him set up to get some shots. Tremendous skills. A long shot to the outside by Terrace Kilgore. Turned away to the side. Get a battle along the wall for the ball. Dietrich tries to grab it down behind the ball. And then finally does again. Heavy hitting against the board. So I told him it's grabbed it. I'm going to go 14 to 10. Buffalo 14. But the problem is Buffalo, as we mentioned in our keys, really paying dividends on their power play. And Rochester missing opportunities. Big, intense game on the boards. You better be watching your backside against this team in their own arena. Dietrich has not come out yet this year. He's really faced it here tonight. Last time he played here, he was the MVP of the championship game. He was the MVP of the Yeah. <laughs>
great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it up, Bud Lights. And by Brian Lacrosse Equipment, the official equipment supplier of the National Lacrosse League. And by Nile Water, official waters of the National Lacrosse League. Buffalo on the attack, losing the ball, moving inside, Rich Kilgore, Pete Weber, Willie Felsmo, Brian Tracy from the Ring River Arena in Buffalo. Chris Levis in goal, winning his first challenge. And the first shot whistles wide of him. And a battle for it running down into the Rochester end, and that will be the over and back. 7-0-5, remaining in the fourth quarter. Smart play by Sudan to put some instant heat on Levis. Velocity on the shot, but didn't even hit the goal, didn't even test Levis, and loses the ball in the process. Tavares, trying to get some room, shooting, stopped by Teacher. I watch them to put a shot on him right away. A whistle on the long pass. Now, they're calling it the lamp game on the substitution. Now, wait a minute, Ross, a Roy Condon may change this call. Watch Roy Conn. Guy going to the bench. What are you calling? Too many men on uh, Rochester. You've got, you've got an interference. You've got an interference on Buffalo coming out that caused the no, not even close. That caused the delay of the guy coming out. I saw the guy running. Right? The other guy was on the floor. Illegal like procedure. We got a reset, and it is a white ball. Tynan was right on the play, and that is what a head it's referee right does. There. He makes the ball and he is sure right. of the right ball. Far side referee thought it was too many men, a slow substitution. Condon saw that it was the interference that kept the Rochester player on the field. The guy coming off has the right of way. Ball goes back to the Nighthawks, and you can see that they want to put pressure on the new goalie. Yeah, he saw definitely what it caused, the infraction it was called. Moving inside, Mary shot. And it's stopped there by Levis, stops his first one. Ryder lying in the goal. I tell you what, they've had two offensive sets against Chris Levis and really haven't put any questions for him. He's got to be a little more comfortable just sitting out there and making those easy pickups. Don Tavares with the bandits down two. Ruben Cross has the place away from Dallas Warner. Dallas Warner, one over toward Dietrich. And now the other two on. Oh, oh, until this game, the return of Tavares. This team will be tough to beat with five minutes to go, only one goal down, and remember the pipe shot. Now watch when Darius gets it back from Brother Rich, how smoothly he goes to the defense. Ducks under one play there, pulls up, fakes, and then comes in. Goes off. Comes with an off-speed shot. Joe Renner, director, says the shot ran out, and you can see it right behind the net. And that way, I wasn't watching it, but he was. He said the clock was at zero, but that goal sticks. They have a one goal lead. The Rochester Nighthawks do. Here's Tavares, stopped by Dietrich. 
Malosky. That's the inbound stolen away. And he comes way outside. And it's down a goal. Got a break. On the shot clock. That's the Larson shot. Deflected away to the right board for Rochester. Say the defense for Rochester has got to get a little tougher. Buffalo is all over the loose balls. Here's Tavares out for Kilgore. This shot into the chest of Dietrich. Dietrich has been so huge. He has been making some unbelievable saves. Whistle's going to be banded ball. Down the goal. 4 0 5 remaining. Man, are they making it tough on Steve Dietrich. Harris Kilgore scoring the controversial goal to pull the game one. Harris feet deflected off the board. Mason Luke trying to get it. Took it up, deflected no. away. DJ comes in this to fight. A scram on the corner for it. And it's going to be banded ball with 341 to go. McCready is covering the ball up. How many times the last two minutes have you seen Rochester with their stick on the ball defensively only to have Buffalo run them down and get the ball back. This was not seen at all in the last five games. There's Gilbert in front. That turned away. Tight angle. And it's maintained possession. Moving inside the shot at the outside of the post by Luke. I'll tell you, these saves by Dietrich are unbelievable. And he makes another huge yeah. save. He makes it look so easy, but he has made four first-team All-Pro saves in the last five minutes. Watch this. Way out in front, wraps it around, and Dietrich sniffs out the shot by Tommy Fair. One-on-one. On one. Unbelievable. Dietrich has been a one-man show. His defense has been... Second timeout. No more left. Defense has been overrun, as you hear Roy Condon tell his Rochester, the Rochester team they have none left. I assume they took that time out for yeah. possession purposes. But Dietrich, a stonewall as you look at Fair, had the chance to tie it. 3-21 remaining. Goal. The shots are even out at 15-1. Right. Now let's watch the upper right-hand corner of the replay we're going to show you of the goal scored allowed for Darius Kilgore. There's the shot clock, down to three. Down to two. Gilbert takes a lot of time. He fakes it here, down to one. Fakes it again. It's at zero. <laughs> Absolutely right. No time left when that goal was made. Horn didn't go off. Slow finger on the button. And of course, this is a Rochester, I mean, a Buffalo building. Brian Lesson downstairs. Oh, Pete, I'll tell you. You actually could hear the buzzer very lightly. The crowd was going wild. Indeed, the shot clock had expired. The left simply couldn't hear the clock. He was on the other side of the court. And Rochester comes up with a goal to go in front by two again. 15-13. Well, one of the best players on the team, Dewey Jacobs, who has had trouble converting all night, comes up with the biggest goal of the night. They don't lose faith in Dewey Jacobs. They push it right into the crease, and Dewey redirects. He's one of the best in the league at finishing in close. He normally no, comes to the other side. No, Watch him take it and go. redirect. Jacobs really no, silenced no. since that first goal of the game has the last no, goal of the game. He has put his mark by scoring the first and maybe the most important goal here. A two-goal lead with under three minutes to play. Rochester with the ball. Taking their time as you can well imagine. Rochester up 15-13. Feet off the flex to the corner. And then you see from there is the shot clock running out on the Nighthawks. Bandits need a couple with 2.23 to go. And plenty of time to get it. They've had a lot of opportunities. They've done a great job of collecting themselves and getting two and three shots at Dietrich. Ciccone, Darius Gilmore, the heavy shot, no, gets their own rebound, coming all the way out, looking to shoot, that's broken up in front, swooped away, Kevin Dance 
trying to get out to McCready. McCready ducked under the arm, coming to Gareth Kilgore. And now, the Nighthawks are going to take their time good. with it. Don't and Timmy Sudan time, pulled back. Hope you up. Very smart of Timmy Sudan, a United States World Team member. He'll keep pace against, we'll go against John Tavares, kind of against U.S. in July. But right here, the crafty guy pulled back, didn't elect to go for the fast break. They call timeout. They do have one left there. To set up the final 117. Plenty of time left for Buffalo to go ahead and make this tie game. This biggest, game is 12 12, heading into the fourth. Biggest challenge here is beating Steve Dietrich. I tell you, the defense was getting beat consistently by the Buffalo hustle, and it was Steve Dietrich who stepped up time and time again. But isn't that the mark of a great goalie? Now, Dallas Elliott does it. Steve Dietrich does it. They seem to get better in the fourth quarter when you have to be better. Well, we've seen Dietrich several times this season on our telecast, and he's played up to that standard every night. And when you figure he has not left the field for one minute, he is their guy, period. Out of the timeout, 77 seconds remain. Thunder sitting over at Dennis Townsend's house right now, probably as a team, watching this game, going to school on it. They'll we face Rochester. No if Rochester time. wins, that'll be a battle for first place either way. Goalie is pulled. They are playing six on five. Then they can all go right here. They've got two books, one in the net. Harris Kilgore, the rich, and deflected off the arm of the goaltender, Dietrich. Moving in on a minute to play. There's a good one for Tavares. Tavares moving in in a high beat over the head of Fair. Gilmore shot coming in. That's good one. They score. Rich Gilmore came in, took the shot, deflected back. And now, with under 53 seconds to go, it's just a one goal differential. They are going for it all tonight. Their backs are against the They've got to win this game, no question about it. They put 6 on 5, no goalie. Tommy Fair hits the redirect off the boards and buries it. Stand Fair, more of a defensive player. But he is playing that right hand finishing spot and gets yeah. the biggest goal. Got to have it, though. Four Take the spot. Fair second goal of the year. Go. Let's watch the frenzy Time here out. now and the time that remains in the fourth. Time out! Time out, Buffalo. And Buffalo takes its last remaining time. It seems like Buffalo's had like eight timeouts. What's going on here? It does seem like that. Nicely done, you'll have to wonder if they're going to pull the goalie here because now one goal will tie it. I don't know if they're going to, uh, you have to see if they're going to gamble and pull that goalie, which could cost them the game. Score by quarters, you can see it's fairly even. With Rochester winning the second, Buffalo winning the third, and Rochester just clinging to that one goal lead here in the fourth. So defense taking over a little bit more here in the second half. And again, what team has defended better this season overall than the Rochester Nighthawks? But you know, when you look at that end of the field, really it's the Buffalo Bandits who have really controlled it. They have continually taken the ball away from the defense of Rochester, only to have Steve Dietrich save them. Paul Day looking on, knowing that he has the best goalie in the league, percentage-wise, ready to do his job. The goalie is out of the goal. Buffalo is winning an all-go here by putting a man advantage in the offensive end. Six on five. If they lose it, they could lose the game. Terrace Kilgore. Tavares, right side, Rich Kilgore. Will be inside, shooting. Dietrich got a piece of the body on that. A feed on to the right. Luke. Trying to hold on. Take it away, Nighthawks. And it goes into 17 seconds remaining. Rochester had the ball, and they lost it. Why they didn't just throw it downfield, I don't know. Jarvis Kilgore, Tavares turned away. A scoop for the ball. Dietrich is down. A pile up on the crease. Seven and a half seconds to go. Buffalo ball. It's a Buffalo ball. Pete, I don't know why when they had the ball, they just didn't throw it downfield. They could have killed the game there, but they didn't do it. 
just chuck it downfield. There's nobody there, and the game would have been over. There is face bar. Jarris, he scores! Jarris scores! Just let them hold the ball 
for 30 seconds. Don't forget, there's a shot clock that's ticking down. Give up the possession. Buffalo, they're ahead once. They're still working to crack it up. They've scored shorthand already. Dietrich stops that one. Andy Murray is a former bandit. Tarts it up for the Nighthawks. Sudden death, folks. Tough to 
cover. The Heat was on Dietrich all night, left-handed shot. They set up the shot for Tavares all the way. The Kilgore brothers got Tavares to this position along with Tavares' great hustle, and then Johnny T punctuates a great night for the Buffalo Bengals. They are back in the playoff hunt. That was a do-or-die shot. We'll have more coming up to Marine Middle Arena in just a few moments. In overtime, Buffalo 16, Rochester 15. The new Baltimore Thunder professional lacrosse team is taking the league by storm. They've got Gary Gate, the Michael Jordan of lacrosse, the best player in the history of the game. Thunder games are affordable family fun, a great place for a great time. Non-stop action, more goals, more speed, more skill and finesse. The Baltimore Thunder, taking the league by storm. For tickets, call 410-41-SEAT. You'll be thunderstruck. Orioles fans, Wizards fans, Comet Hoops fans, Caps fans, DC United fans. Welcome. Now, you're only two clicks away from Cyber Sports Chats, venting, scoring great picks, and hanging inside HTS. Get on HTS Online in America Online's Digital City, Washington. Keyword HTS. HTS on America Online. Ready to play. Goodbye. There's a lot of quality built into every Toyota Camry. Quality that starts right here, with parts made for Toyota in Maryland and Virginia, and sent to Georgetown, Kentucky, where they're used to build Toyota Camry. Every business day. For just $3.90 a week, the Wall Street Journal gives you the incisive writing, the big picture thinking you need to make better decisions. More confident decisions. Plus, with your paid subscription, you'll get our updated guide to understanding personal finance, 170 pages of great money managing and money saving ideas, plus our easy to use software. That's the guide and the software, a retail value of $18.95, yours free with a 10 week subscription to the journal. Get the confidence that comes from reading the world's most trusted source of business news and information. Call now, 800-334-2900. That's 800-334-2900 for the Wall Street Journal. Back at Marine Midland Arena, Brian Blessing with the man that tied this one up. 16-15 the final in overtime. The Bandits rally to beat Rochester. You had to get to overtime, and you got the tire about three seconds left. Yeah, we, we've been having a lot of uh, success with the six on five, uh, and uh, we got two big goals off. And uh, this team's been working hard. We haven't been getting the breaks. Uh, we've been hitting a lot of posts, and you know tonight they went in for us. Not lost in this comeback effort. Ross Cowie takes the shot. He's hurt. Levis comes off the bench, ice cold, and played great for you. Yeah, he came in and made some really, uh, you know, not very tough saves, but he made the saves he should have made, and he kept us right in it. And you know, Roscoe played unbelievable. Uh, we're giving up some easy shots on him, and. Uh, he took a bad, pretty bad shot to the face. So, uh, you know, Love is coming in and did a great job. I guess you get the Cinderella script, right? I mean, Tavares, the, the unbelievable rehab to get back so fast. He obviously lifted the spirits of the team. Then he comes out and gets the game winner. What can you say about this guy? Uh, you can never describe John Tavares. I think he's uh, top two or three players in the, in the world, you know, let alone just in a mill. He's just an unbelievable player. And uh, the last goal there, he just picked the bottom corner, which is a great shot. All right, Darius, congratulations. Great job in the comeback, Darius Kilgore. And here comes the man of the hour, John scoot on over here if you would and here he is congratulations uh, can you write a script like that one oh we need we need something to turn us around the guys came out with a great effort chris levis rookie goalie came in did a great job there is kid will pick up great team effort come back by two goals we didn't hang our heads came back stay in the game great thanks to the crowd for supporting us tonight you come up with the game winner fatigue wise how you feeling i mean to be out here running around not only do you have to you know do it for four quarters you got to play overtime you had to be winded pretty good i'm exhausted i swear that goal i couldn't stand up <laughs> my shot wasn't on i just kept shooting i got lucky hit his glove and went in just the way the ball bounced. How's the knee feeling? Oh, knee is no problem. It's my endurance. <laughs> well, congratulations, John. Thanks a lot. Fans were waiting for this man to come back, and he comes back with a flurry, doesn't he, Pete? 
What a huge flurry it was. Thank you, Brian Blessing. For Brian Blessing, Lee Felsmo, and Pete Weber, our Bud Light MVPs tonight, Darius Gilgore and John Tavares. Hope you enjoyed this one from Buffalo. The final in sudden death. John Tavares wins it for the Bandits, 16-15. Good night to you all from Marine Midland Arena in Buffalo. You've been watching National Lacrosse League action.